Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Shrewsbury Town reporter Lewis Cox. Lewis, it's our last day today. How sad are you on a scale of one to ten? It's been a long week. It's been a long week. It's yeah. It's been a long, you know. For the uh, shout out to the, the Shrewsbury Town members of staff and media that have have lived this journey with us. You know, I've had to come back and forth from from the Express and Star five days a week. <laughs> I'm just pleased that this is the last the last trip I've got to do because expenses are killing me. Yeah, killing me. We, uh, are we tricking our viewers? That's the question. I don't, I don't care. It's fine. It's all good. Okay. Um, um, look, we're in the superb safe, safe standing. Correct. It is up and, running, one, it? up and running this season and uh, a massive hit. Yeah, we're about to get um, sprinkled on as well, aren't we? It's okay, yeah. the camera will get it first. It's sprinklers. fine. <laughs> oh, it's, um, in, in my opinion, it's been a really great addition, mm. uh, the safe standing in the south stand. Um, it's done wonders for the atmosphere. Um, there's, I mean, we're, we're, we're close to the drum that's that's based over there. The yeah, you wanted to beat it, but I wasn't going to let you on no, camera. That's explicit material. I'm quite disappointed mm. by that. But um, it just gives a, a background noise. There's, there's, all, you know, even in games that have not been the most memorable or, mm. or, or lively on the pitch, there's, there's always a bit of an atmosphere coming from here. And and yes, there's also a great atmosphere over in Block 19. But it's no bad thing to have two in different parts of the ground. You know, possibly a different. Mm type of fan in each section but but this over here it's put the club in the spotlight nationwide but mm -hmm. also globally you know great work from the supporters parliament guys who won our award recently our fan award won a uh, football league award and, and uh, yeah totally deserved for, for creating this that a lot of fans enjoy every game yeah first first day of the season was it was incredible um john askey was in charge then correct not anymore your your favorite man uh, what did you, what do you feel about Askey in the way? Do you think he, he was a bit unlucky? Do you think he got he, he, he finished you know got sacked too early, uh, or do you feel that it was the right time to get rid? It, yeah, um, it, it just didn't work for him. Sadly, here um, it was he 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 was a Macclesfield legend, mm -hmm. Macclesfield player, coach, manager. He'd never been anywhere else, so it was always a big. <laughs> it's big shoes to fill as well under, after Paul Hurst. Well, that's as well. that's that's arguably the major, <laughs> major factor, isn't it? Yeah, you know, following Paul Hurst when the expectations go up. You know, everyone says, "Oh, I didn't expect playoffs again." Mm -hmm. But everyone expected better, and big ass because he came in Askey with the squad decimated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is going after this long week of uh, video chat. The, the squad decimated, uh, having to put his stamp on things when he's not managed at this level before. Got in, as we've discussed through the week, really, mm -hmm. some talented players that yeah, had yeah. a good season, but not enough. Um, didn't sell himself to fans initially as, as you want to as a manager which was a shame you know them, them sort of pulling him up on his persona but it's just the way it goes uh, I suppose make in the industry did, did he make mistakes for you make, make bad mistakes yeah yeah I mean because the relationship with the fans deteriorated pretty yeah, quickly yeah the, uh, the formation they, they, they were you know calling out he's, he's sort of 4 three, three. He, he changed it at times and it was just not working it mm. changed to a diamond it, it didn't work um, he he was, you know, some some of the personnel choices were interesting, but I remember he was getting grief from 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 fans from as early as the third game of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, so it, it was very early. You could almost say the writing was on the wall so early, and it that's a shame because he needed time. But you know, it got into October, November. Mm. There were there were clear issues, and obviously loud noises coming from from areas of fans. And having said all that, when when he got sacked, which was I believe November, mm -hmm. um, early November. They'd, they'd drawn 1-1 one, one here against Salford of the yeah. conference in the FA Cup and actually the, the run of form it was like three defeats in seven it wasn't disastrous mm -hmm. um, but you know Askey started started without a win in, in nine league games I think it was 11 in all mm -hmm. told so, and that's not the start you need is it no. put him on the back foot and he struggled to, to recover um, I, had, I had no problems with, with him personally um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it was the right appointment at the right time. No, no but obviously left them, you know, it was a disappointing position they were in. Sam Ricketts came and, um, you know, he's, he's done, he's done okay, he's the yeah. ship in the end. Yeah. It, was, it was a difficult start for him though as well. Well, he, well yeah, but, he, he, you know, he kept them up in the end, didn't he? Which was, that we was are the, really the priority, getting close yeah. to a downpour yeah. over here, aren't we? Uh, yeah, it was, it was the priority to, to keep them in the league. Albeit when Ricketts took over, I believe town were 15th, yeah. about eight points clear mm -hmm. of, of the drop. So, and that, that came because interim bosses, you know, Danny Coyne and, um, Eric Ramsey mm -hmm. they'd steadied the ship they had well more than that they'd got you know four or five winning winning streak in town were looking up yeah. rather than behind and then there was speculation of a new manager that they went for a young hungry Ricketts they're following this this trend mm -hmm. of, of, of managers on their way up with something to to prove at the level and you know we know Ricketts is playing career locally as well uh, and obviously on an international stage surprise because he'd only managed 19 games at Wrexham in the yeah. conference 
that that that's a risk, isn't it? Because you know he's mm. he's, he's a new manager. Um, that's a risk, and are we still to find out if the risk paid off? Probably. You yeah. Know, he, it, it was a tough start. You're absolutely right. It was a tough start. It was a tough run of games. He won one of um, eleven, I mm -hmm. believe, and then went. Uh, yeah, a massive, massive into the relegation run. zone, and yeah, massive it was worrying, uh, wasn't it? There, there, was, there was a genuine fear, uh, yeah, you know, until yeah. late Come, in the season that this side could go down. Coming towards the end of January, yeah, we, we had at the same time an FA Cup run where where they, they played Stoke twice, beat them. They played Wolves, almost beat Wolves. Mm -hmm. A great occasion at Molyneux. So that there were some good memories under Ricketts while the team were, were struggling in the league for various reasons. You know, they were undergoing a bit of a, a change in the January transfer window. Ricketts was trying to use the same players he didn't really have the quality to, to, to give people breathers with the, the cup schedule and, and all of that there, there were reasons but you know again fa fans were, were pretty disillusioned early it, it was a tough start mm -hmm. you know they, they weren't blown away because of the, the results in the early stage I think under Askey and Ricketts town were never getting a hiding really um, losing by the odd goal generally but a couple of tough defeats here at the Meadow I think they lost 3-0 to um, to Charlton and Luton obviously two big hitters yeah but, of course but, yeah you know, pretty chastening defeats and, and poor displays, which you never want on your, your, your home ground. But, and we spoke all through the week really about the sort of January recruitment your Roshan Williams, is your Tyrese Campbells, your Scott Goldwarns. They came in and Ricketts tweaked the formation mm -hmm. in February. Got to give him credit for that, coming up to that 3 4 3. Um, and results became more consistent and you know they they were you're right there was fear uh, of the drop up until march probably mm -hmm. but they they worked themselves with a couple of big away wins into a position where they're okay away form is worth a case in point that that, that was poor all season they they were they had one win away up until about February yeah. uh, it was the worst away form in the league and they couldn't buy a win away it improved with the consistency of the new formation and they got the crucial wins they needed look he's, he's got a big summer ahead hasn't he he's got to yeah. put his, his mark on this side he's got time to bed in now because you know this 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 football game's a crazy game and if he doesn't start well then, then there'll be question mark yeah. asked he, he knows that though as well yeah, as much as yeah. anyone you know I, I'm sure they, they finished 18th yeah. survive relegation uh, ultimately confirmed it on the penultimate game of the season I'm sure He'd have wanted to finish higher for, for the history books. You know mm -hmm. that the club are used to finishing that low. If he'd sure. have got them up to 13th, 14th, it would have looked, mm -hmm. you know, good, good on them, good on what they've, they've achieved. So they'd have wanted more. So the, the fans would have wanted more. So they've, they've got a job to do early in the season. They, they can't afford a start that Askey had, mm -hmm. who, who just came in and you know had to an extent these excuses we're talking about and following Paul Hurst. They, they haven't really got that to fall back on. Uh, Sam Ricketts and his staff. They he'll, he'll want to get these players in early though, and yeah, a, yeah, yeah, really early. I mean, last season they had the playoffs, which 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 took down a bit yeah. of time, and then the manager changed. But this season, obviously, we're we're sort of touching on late May now, mm -hmm. um, getting closer to June when when contracts expire. You know, you expect yeah. things to start picking up in yeah, June. Yeah. Um, big job though I talked earlier in the week it's it's a big it has all season been mm -hmm. and it still is and it's mm -hmm. a something they need to sort it's a big bloated squad yes it is I, I was saying to you earlier in the week um, if if the, the guys offered contracts agree there's 25 players they have first team senior players yeah. in a squad 25 that's without five loans that'll come in and permanent signings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have a squad of 30 no no, no of course not so no, no, no. All, there are a number of players under contract and th this is the big sort of yeah right he's got to get his signings right mm -hmm. of course of course he's got to get the loans right and a keeper and a another striker and, and all that but where where's it where's it all going to fit if you yeah. can't get the players out yeah of course yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure he knows players that aren't in his plans long term mm -hmm. i'm sure fans have got ideas of you know there, there are a few that haven't played that you would imagine aren't in his plans because they haven't played and, and they would want to go and play elsewhere now they're under contract here so it might be that way inclined to sit on their money and, and be happy you know some are playing in positions that don't fit into the 3-4-3 three, mm. three formation so there are various interesting examples we spoke through the week about Angle other players of, of that of that ilk you know your Isas um, he's, he's brought in players or players that he's known you know Coventry yes, yes, Wolves, Rex yeah. and Wolves you know how much of that does he need to start looking further afield and does that come with time yeah I mean we spoke about Giles as a good example as well of, of where the, the connection with Wolves should really boost town if that comes off they've, they've beaten a number of clubs to signing of Giles just because of Ricketts' links which is a, a superb thing because I think he could be a great signing um, I think fans still want to see a Ricketts transfer window uh, there January 
and, and there were some hits mm -hmm. your Tyrese Campbells and, and your Roshan Williams certainly there are some some misses that, that we haven't really seen didn't play Sam Smith sure. Stephen Payne um, so he you, you're right I think fans want to see the type of player that from from what um, section of the, the football league pyramid mm -hmm. or what clubs that, that Ricketts targets mm -hmm. you know who we've, we spoke about Giles this week we spoke about Dan Udo from Telford Conference mm -hmm. North no I think the quality Ricketts knows the National League quite well from managing Wrexham I think he'll be quite happy to dip into there for the, 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 the talent but you I, I do feel you need that league kind of mm. not league experience that they're over the hill and on the way back down and kind of journeyman winding down but yeah you know, some some mid twenties foot league one <coughs> players that have, have played a good number of games this division and know what it takes and, and wanna wanna be successful. Sort of what, thing. what what is the aim for Sam Ricketts this season? What's the goal? Is is it, is it mid table? Is it is it survival? Is it is it pushing towards the playoffs? What will be a successful season? What is what do you think he he's he's going to be told to, to achieve? Um, it's, it's that's a I think you could ask a lot of fans that and you get a lot of different answers. Um, I think this they're going into their fifth season in, in this league in a row. Mm -hmm. Um, which is you know, no mean feat for a club You're fairly recently bouncing between League 1 and League 2 this is the fifth so by this stage you want to be established mm -hmm. you want to be sort of consistently not worrying about the drop there were still worries about relegation this season so yeah. they've had relegation worries and a playoff final there's, there's been no mm -hmm. middle ground safety so it's 10th a good season yeah, in a, yes, yeah. superb you know mid table 12th if you finish 12th 13th 14th but you'd you're not worried about the drop yeah. until until the end. I think I think fans would be settled with that. I think Town need that season still. It, okay. it, it could have ideally been this season just gone. Didn't happen. Obviously, there were there were still relegation fears t till the fair, fairly near the end. Uh, so I still think they need that to to kind of find their feet and think. Hold on, we're now a club where it's got the team and the management that's that's too good to worry about the drop. We're we're, we're here where we should be. You know, we're not just treading water and keeping our heads above it every every season because you want to really live to survive it's good being in this level better than being in league two mm. but you just sort of live to survive Warsaw. it Jesus. Yeah. living to <laughs> living to survive it you want to yeah. you want to push on and challenge don't you we, we, get, we get a taste a glimpse of it under paul hurst proving really that it can be done so season of, of getting settled in and, and then really give it, give it a push yeah the I, following think, season. I think look if if they can have two or three years in a row of being solidly mid to um, lower top half then yeah. they're in a, they're a great place there aren't many teams in this division now that have been in this division mm. as long as town now. Okay. so they, they need to start in my opinion establishing themselves to be solid mid-table and not a relegation contender because I think if you and we'll do that closer to the season we'll ask reporters across the country you know your, your pick for the drop mm -hmm. I think quite a few would still have Shrewsbury in there and they need to break that that mould of being mm -hmm. oh you know little Shrewsbury are sort of most people's favourites to go down they, they can do better than that and to be honest they should be able to do better than that with, with everything they've got here the, the well run club stadium training ground I know the kind of boring things that, that people don't like to talk about but you know it's better than being a Bolton isn't it Absolutely. it's starting the season minus 12 points you know you, <laughs> you'd rather start on zero than minus 12 but um, yeah I think it's, it's, it's achievable mid table if they get the right blend of players in and they can have a great pre-season uh, get fit and get ready for August the 3rd that's it we're done we're done enjoy it I need a week off yeah I need a week off too <laughs> uh, it's going to be a busy summer, summer ahead for all the latest Shrewsbury Town news make sure you log on to ShropshireStar.com